Every move you make, every move you make. Just, I think you need to line them up so that I, I go down the order. So this one I'll grab first, second, So you're third, gonna go right to left. Fourth. Okay, what time is it? It is. There is a clear path to guessing each one of these, but there are also some tricks along the way. Also, have you seen how you can change the interface of your stopwatch on your... To make it analog? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. All right, am I in focus? All right, can you see the pie? Maybe tilt it forward. Like this? Hey everyone, it's Nathan with Crown and Caliber. And <laughs> Uh oh, it's dripping. Oh boy, it's on the carpet. Uh, do we need paper towels? I'm definitely gonna get in trouble for that. Oh boy. Hey everyone, it's Nathan with Crown and Caliber. And you may be asking yourself some questions. For starters, why is there a sixth grade science fair project on the table? And why am I holding a pie? It's Nathan with Crown and Caliber. Let me set this bad boy down right here. So, some of our friends over at How to Drink, it's another YouTube channel, um, a gentleman by the name of Greg runs it, and it is awesome. And recently he did a video where he blind tasted a bunch of vodkas and had to determine what was what and which was which. And so that gave us an inspiration for this. And so what we have here is we have five watches, right, in this general region that I haven't seen that Jonathan has picked out from our top brands. And there was a running bet around the office as to whether or not I could just use my hands and guess what these watches are. And so to up the stakes a little more, we decided to film it. And then if I am successful, then boy, do we have a treat for you guys. We're gonna go ahead and give away one Crown and Caliber swag pack to a lucky viewer. And all you have to do for a chance to win the swag pack is comment on this video in its first week. Now, if I'm unsuccessful, that means no swag packs. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. And I take this pie to the face. And just so you know, that we don't work in half measures. That is a pie, that is not shaving cream. I really hope I don't have to take a pie to the face today, but we're getting ready to jump in and I wanna give you the context. Five watches for a total of 100 points. Now each watch we break down into two categories. The brand is worth 15 points and the model will be worth five points. And all I have to do is get a passing grade. So here C's truly get degrees. And as long as I get 70 points, then we're sending out a swag pack and I get to enjoy a pie and not take one of the face. So, I'm pretty much ready to go. Jonathan, how about you, man? I can't wait. <laughs> I bet you can't. <laughs> also worth noting, I only get 60 seconds with each watch in my hand before I have to then deliberate and make the decision. So, okay. point me in the direction of the first watch. Okay, basically open your hand and timer's gonna start once you touch the watch, okay. right? Okay, you ready? All right. All right, guys, here we go. Here we go, go. Okay. Timer started. All right, so the bracelet is not an oyster. It is not a Jubilee, so I roll, rule out Rolex. It has sharper links. Um, honestly, that link bracelet reminds me pretty iconically of a Breitling. Um, it, all right, so we have a chronograph, so it could definitely be um, a Navitimer if that is true, let's see. 30 seconds. All right, so this one is probably more of a layup and a little bit easier because the bezel rotates both ways. It's a bi-directional bezel and there is no clicks. Um, pretty much crystal the entire watch. Chronograph. 45 unique, seconds. Five link bracelet. My guess is this is a Breitling Navitimer. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer. With seconds to spare, you nailed it. Yes. Awesome. I, I wanted to give you a nice little warm up when we started to get you right in, in the right headspace because these are, I like to think they're gonna get a little more difficult. I sure hope so. What gave it away for me, I think, was this unique bracelet style as well as the almost end-to-end -end crystal and that pretty smooth, no clicks in it, bi-directional bezel that is part of the um, slide rule function on the Breitling. So, all right, that means I currently have 20 points. Correct. Okay, I feel pretty good about that. All right, so I'm ready for the next one. You ready to claw machine? Yeah. Okay. So, here we go. To left. your left, your left, down. Oh, I should start the timer. Is Wait. this where it is? Yep, when you're ready, I'm okay. ready. Go. Okay, much heavier. Um, what the? 
It feels like there's a crown on both sides. Okay, so, oh, oh, ah, so this bracelet, um, so the crown on both sides make me think that one of these is a helium escape valve. Um, is it upside down? Bidirectional bezel means that it's not inherently your traditional dive bezel. 30 seconds. Um, golly, okay, I'm saying it goes this way because this feels like this is three o'clock. This is a helium escape valve. That leads me to believe it is an Omega. Um, the thickness feels, the size feels much bigger than Aquaterra. So I'm gonna say, can I feel, gosh, I can't tell bracelet wise. I'm gonna go with an Omega Planet Ocean. Stop, yes, you got it. Yes, gosh. Okay, so that was weird at first to pick up a watch that feels like it has crowns on both sides. And so I went through my mind and a pretty iconic thing on Omegas, um, some of their dive watches is the helium escape valve here at like 10 o'clock. And so once I was able to orient it, which is harder than I thought, um, I then went and checked out the bezel. The fact that it's bi-directional leads me to believe there may be a GMT function, but we're not getting graded Bonus on points. that. Bonus um, points. But a bi-directional bezel is not something you're traditionally gonna find on the dive watch. So um, if I was to go a step further, I would even say it's a Planet Ocean Good Planet. Oh, hang on. Let me see. No, it is not. Ah. I well, picked these out, I should have known that. But anyway, yeah, sounds like I have been successful. Yes. Okay, so, two watches down. Maybe not as hard as I thought. I feel like I'm, I'm feeling pretty, pretty high and mighty right now. So I've got 40 points and we're going into watch three. Man, a minute is not very long with these watches. I mean, I, I do think you were right, Jonathan. They have been maybe so far a little bit easier, some more iconic designs, so. Um, I think this next one, if I can, yeah, this next one might be tricky, if not the fourth one. For sure, okay, All so. Right, so you're above it, go ahead and go down. This is it? Yep. All right, I'm Just ready. Just close your hand, there you go. Okay. Um, okay, so bracelet is, there's heft to the weight. I feel a Cyclops, which immediately makes me think Rolex. Um, now, um, if I feel Cyclops, I start to think it has a date, so immediately I go to Datejust. Um, size leads me to believe that it is a Datejust and not a sport model. Um, that is almost a dead giveaway in that clasp because it feels hidden um, and it has that cam lock. So my guess is this is a Jubilee bracelet with a hidden clasp, which narrows it down a little further. And 40 seconds. I am gonna... Bezel has some texture, which leads me to believe it is also a fluted bezel. 50. Um, and those are solid end links. So I'll set that down because I know my time's up. No, so you got five seconds. I got five seconds. I don't need uh, it. You, okay. Wow. Okay. He's a confident so, boy. That is a solid bracelet, both on weight and the end links are solid end links. So I already know that, and based off of the hidden clasp, that that is a six digit reference. Um, and I'm guessing by the fact that the bezel does not rotate, it eliminates the Turnograph and Thunderbird, but it did feel fluted. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is a six digit, wait a second, oh. Talk me through it, what are you thinking? So then I just thought, oh, I was going to say a six digit date just, but the weight makes me think that that could be precious metal. So I'm going to, which you wouldn't be able to feel the difference between a day date and a date just. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is a Rolex day date. <laughs> we almost, Woo! almost didn't get there. Yes, that weight from the beginning, definitely I was like, wow, that's got some heft to it. Oh man, there that was you tricky. go. tricky, you like that? I do. Mm. I thought, I thought the like feeling the president like the presidential league yeah. links. I thought that would be the giveaway because the 36 millimeter could have gone date just day date. Yeah. Obviously the Cyclops, um, but I figured you guessed it more off of the weight. I thought yeah. you were gonna get it by the texture of the bracelet and the links themselves. But a Jubilee bracelet can also be on just a regular date just. Not a Jubilee. Oh, that's a president bracelet. Oh, I yeah. couldn't feel the difference. Really. 
I couldn't. Wow. Well, that, that I, huh? Yeah. Wow. It didn't even come into my mind. Oh wow. Woo. I, I skirted by on that. So I'm sitting at 60 points. So I literally just have to you get are one so more close. right. You were so close. If I get close. one more right, swag packs in the mail to somebody, and then I can I can skate free on the the last one. Okay, so where are we? I think, oh boy, this one's a good one because there's a couple. If you thought that was a curveball, this next one is going to okay. be a couple more. All right, on your cue, I will start the timer. All right. Yep, close your hand. Okay. Let's see here. Oh boy. Oh boy okay. is right. Oh boy is right. What the? Oh man. Okay, so that clasp to me feels very Tudor. Um, and that's based off of Tudor has these little ceramic bearings and this part of the clasp feels very Tudor. It does have what feels like a kind of 30 seconds. three link bracelet. Um, it is a no rotating bezel, screw down crown. Is there a? 45. Um, okay. Let's Remember, see. you can take time to think afterwards. Yeah. 10 seconds. There's no. Five. Oh boy. Two, one. Okay. Um, so to me, the biggest giveaway. I'm pretty sure it's a Tudor, and here's why. The crown feels like a Tudor, um, just in that design. Um, it has kind of that blockier case design that I also associate with Tudors. And then the other big giveaway for me is that clasp design, and it just has that unique kind of click in it and these little like ceramic bearings. As far as the model goes, it did not have a rotating bezel, so that eliminates the traditional black bay. Now, that means it could be a Black Bay 41. Um, it could also be a North Flag. And it was just one crown. I feel like the North Flag has an integrated case, if I remember correctly. But it did feel bigger. Oh, man. I'm going to go with a Tudor Black Bay 41. <laughs> You got it. Heck yes. Yes. Okay, so this is, so, okay, we're skating free now. I thought, okay, uh, the, what you picked up on everything I wanted you to, but I thought those might be very subtle attributes. Yeah. So the design of the clasp at the point was yep. really obvious to me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to throw you off with the oyster style bracelet. Yes. Um, and the fact that there was no Cyclops. Mm-hmm. I wanted, to, good. I, wanted to, I wanted to trick you into thinking maybe like an Air King or something. Awesome. So at this point, I am pretty much skating carefree. I'm not taking a pie to the face, which is encouraging because I truly did not want to be taking a pie to the face. Um, so I'm 80 out of 100 points. Um, let's, let's kick it up a notch. Let's say if I can get all of these, <laughs> you're not taking a pie to the face. You oh, God. Look crazy. <laughs> you if, that, yeah, I'm off camera, but you did not, you, so you could not see how big my eyes if got. If I'm successful, like, we send out a second swag pack. Some t-shirts, koozies. I ain't mad at it. Hats, fun stuff. So, hey, just double your chances now on getting a swag pack. If I can get this second one, we'll go ahead and send out two swag packs to anyone that comments on the video in the first week. Um, so I am now hovering over the watch. Hovering over the watch. I'm All grabbing right, the my timer. Right here. Uh, a little more to your left. Yep, directly beneath you. So when you're ready, I'll start the timer. All right. Go. Okay. All right, there's a dome shape to it. Oh, oh this is a good one. Oh, there's no bezel. There, it's a chronograph. There's not a screw down crown. A bracelet, what could that be? Um, let's see. Oh, it has buttons. Ooh. Okay. 30 seconds. The traditional case shape, bracelet. No rotating bezel, but it feels like there is a bezel. That chronograph pusher. 45. Oh, 
Oh man, this is gonna be a tough one. Um, Five. Pretty thick. Two, one, stop. Put okay. it down. Talk me through what you got. Okay, so let's start with the bracelet and the clasp. The bracelet has depressing buttons on the clasp, which makes me think Tag, Tag Hoyer, because I think when I first felt the bracelet, I was thinking maybe like a, like a Milanese loop, almost like a Breitling Super Ocean or Super Ocean Heritage. Like a plop prof? Or even a plop prof, but I didn't think that, first off, it doesn't have a rotating bezel. Um, so it, in my mind, well then it has a chronograph, so I don't think the, if I'm, if I'm correct, I don't think that Super Ocean Heritage Milanese have um, button depressors. So then I thought, well, maybe it's a tag Hoyer with a... You're trying to read my face right now. <laughs> I'm trying to. So I'm thinking, based off what I feel, it would be a tag Hoyer. Um, and that was the only other thing I could think of that had that bracelet. But then if that is the bracelet, to me, I jumped to a grains of rice bracelet, which would then be more of like a re-edition or reissue from Tag Hoyer, which leads me to believe that it maybe is like an Altavia re-edition of sorts. Um, but I can't, in my mind, I can't pinpoint what the model would be. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that it is a Tag Hoyer Altavia re-edition Traditional case, so I'm gonna say it was something like, I don't even know what it would be, but it's I'm just like a, the one that comes to mind is the, um, the Panda Dial, the Jack Hoyer, Octavia re-edition. Do you wanna pick it up and see? <clears throat> you well. Could, you could have moved the board. I could have moved the board. I guess at this point I can totally move the board. All right, let's see. So that would have been, just put that on the ground. So this is an Altavia re-edition. That bezel doesn't rotate, but it feels like it's gonna rotate. For the record, clasp, got that. Not necessarily a full-on grains of rice, but it kind of has that grains of rice. This may be what this updated grains of rice is. And um, I'm not familiar with this limited edition. Wait, is this the, I'm trying to see, yeah. This is the Hodinki edition, those orange accents. Um, all right, so clearly I'm not as bad as we thought. And more importantly, I'm not taking this one to the face. Hey guys. Mm. I didn't want to have to clean that up. Nor did I, so badly didn't want to have to clean that up. We even spilled some of it at the beginning. We guys, we we're just having some fun. We are um, always looking for fun things to do. For real, go check out How to Drink. Greg over there does some awesome stuff and definitely worth the view. Go ahead, comment on the video. As long as you comment it on the first week, we will choose at random, um, unfortunately, one individual. You know what? I got 95 points, right? You did, yeah. So I did. feel like... I mean, you were pretty cool. I mean, you said Octavia re-edition. So I don't know what, yeah, you know what? We're sending out two swag packs. So go ahead, comment on the video. It's like a 97 um, and a half. That's a 97 and a half. Um, I'm thankful I didn't have to take a pie to the face. Thank you, Jonathan, for picking out the watches. Um, I feel like if we're to do this again. I should have done better. You should have picked something a, a good bit harder, but um, hey guys, as always, thanks for watching. See ya.